Kim Howard, Kentucky Autism Training Center. My background is modern and severe disabilities as well as learning and behavior disorder. I work for Kentucky Autism Training Center, just in case you don't know. Um, zones of regulation is one of my favorite social emotional supports. I like it because you can use it across the board. I've seen this be used as school-wide uh, positive behavior intervention support for everybody. I've seen this be used individually with just one student. I've seen this be used with a whole classroom. Um, so there's no right or wrong answer. It's what works best for you. The nice thing about it, there is a book. I'm going to go ahead and pass the book around. The books have gone down in price. They used to be around $80, but they've gone down to about 50 ish dollars. So I'll pass it if you've never seen it before. Um, take a look. The nice thing about the book is it has IEP objectives, suggestions, right? It has IEP objective suggestions. If I'm using zones of regulation in my classroom, obviously my student has some sort of need for social emotional support. I probably am going to have an IEP uh, objective or goal around behavior is my guess. Um, so this already has some suggestions for you, uh, as well as some data collection sheets. So you don't have to guess about what to put down. So I really like that. It also has that book is the curriculum. It has a set of about 15 or 20. Here are activities that you can do to teach your students how to do their own emotional regulation. I have used it with everybody about the ages five and up. I don't use it with toddlers, right? They're not old enough to process out yet. Um, I have used this with students with moderate and severe disabilities as well. It works really well. Because how do I, how do I identify MAD? If no one's ever told me what MAD looks like. And you can't see, if you don't know how to read body language, you can't see MAD, right? Um, so that's what I like about zones of regulation, is it takes those abstract thoughts and emotions and it makes them visual. Uh, for students with autism, sorry guys, we're stuck in the middle. <laughs> this was real loud in here. Um, so we try to be loud. So that's what I like about zones of regulation. So self-regulation is the other piece of that. How do I teach kids to self-regulate? How do we teach ourselves to self-regulate? How do we learn to self-regulate? Um, hopefully we had good models, right? It's okay, come on in. That's the other thing with zones of regulation is if I'm using this curriculum, I'm gonna need to model it. And let me say, inside of that resource folder is the PowerPoint, and inside of that resource folder is this. So it is a freebie, um, sort of, to make your own zones. Um, it's in there, so you should be able to access it. Yours is a slightly smaller version, um, and I think they printed them out. They were over on that table when you first came in. So, a couple of resources for Zones of regulation has been around for many years. I want to say more than 20, and it could be more than 20. I'm not 100% sure. It's been around more than 10 years. Definitely more than 10 plus years. So the nice thing about zones is if you type in in Google zones of regulation, a million different things will come up. So there's already a lot of resources out there that you can take and use easily. Um, and there's something called zones of regulation book nook. So if you Google zones of regulation book nook, um, children's literature all the way through high school literature will come up and it's children's stories. So my favorite is Little Critter, I was so mad. You guys ever read Little Critter, I was so mad. Little Critter's mad. So as you read the book, you can talk about what strategies can Little Critter use. Because when we first start talking about our emotions, and we first start talking about self-regulation, it's easier for me to see someone else regulate than for me to understand the process of regulating myself, right? Especially if I'm younger, especially if I have more cognitive impacts from my disability. Um, so those are my tips for sure. Model zones of regulation. When I use this in my classroom, um, I would have it set up, and it doesn't have to be on a book ring. I just did that for my convenience. Um, I would model this. I would, I would pretend stub my foot, and I would go, I'm so mad. I'm so mad, I hurt my foot, I'm so mad, I'm gonna kick a table. And my kids would say, and I would say, I would pause <laughs> and wait to see what my kids said. And sometimes my kids would say, kick a table. Sometimes 
my kids would say, Miss Kim, you're in the red zone. What can you do? Right? So I would model going and using zones of regulation because it's easier for them to see that in you or others before they can take that and process that out for their own self. So know that that is true. Um, so the book note, I've also used have also used little short kids cartoons you know little short clips of kids cartoons little pieces of hey this conflict happened or so they're having a really great day maybe i'm trying to model the green zone um, so there's a lot of options so what is self-regulation self-regulation is the ability to adjust the level of alertness and to direct how our emotions are revealed behaviorally <laughs> um, in socially adaptive ways i always say that people we can always tell adults that cannot that do not have self-regulation. Have you ever been to a family reunion? So in my family reunion, I have an uncle, and he does not self-regulate at all. <laughs> He's a fully functional adult, but he does not have good self-regulation skills. He's gonna bring up the topic that causes the argument. I don't know if he just likes to argue. I don't know. And then when he gets to arguing, he's going to turn redder and madder. And we're all convinced he will surely die of a heart attack during this argument. Um, but self-regulation is a skill we need our whole life, right? I need self-regulation as an adult. Self-regulation today kept me from running out the door at 2 o'clock because it's Friday and my body says, and you're done. Right? We all use self-regulation. So self-regulation comes into self-control, resiliency, keeping on doing something even when your body says you're done. Self-management, anger management. I can control my emotions. Impulse control. I won't act on... My brain says, oh, Kim, what do you want to do? My body, my brain, the other part of my brain says, uh, no way. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Let's maybe not do that. Sensory regulation. I've been cold today. I've been hot today. Um, I can adjust for my own sensory needs. I put my coat on and off all day long. It just depends on the moment. So zones of regulation is a systematic. That's the part about it. It's a systematic cognitive behavior approach that we use to teach self-regulation by categorizing the way that we feel into different colors or four concrete zones, right? You can use this all ages, all grades. Um, I try to I have used this even um, with uh, older folks with dementia, so adults, 80s, 90s, uh, that still have the capacity to tell the colors. The goal is, to help students become more aware and independent in controlling their own emotions, right? Um, and their own impulses and manage their own lives. So just know these things. It's a teaching tool. Um, it is a teaching tool. It's not necessary a, necessarily a behavior model. Um, it's kind of a thinking framework. It gives us a framework to work within. Um, and it's a good way to nurture our skill development. If you're working with very young children, it makes sense that they may not know how to regulate their own emotions. If you're working with students that have cognitive behavior, cognitive impact, um, or maybe they have severe emotional issues, then it makes sense that they may not be able to regulate their own behavior yet. Um, it's meant to be supportive in nature. A red zone is, um, we'll talk about red zones in a bit. A red zone is I'm angry or I'm really upset. It's not meant to be punitive. So if a student is in a red zone, it's okay, right? It's meant to be a teaching tool to help them figure out how do I get back out of that zone. So what are the goals of it? We wanna regulate those emotions across the whole day, across our school day, across settings, uh, and then to help them identify how they are functioning and then make decisions, what do they need to do to help them with their own emotions and their own body self-regulate better? So this is kind of the whole zones. And the nice thing about zones, we're gonna look at a lot of different ways that it can look. A bunch of this is just pictures. A um, bunch of this is pictures. So the blue zone, green zone, yellow zone, red zone. And we're gonna talk about what those are. So blue zone. A blue zone is a rest zone. I'm in the blue zone, y'all. <laughs> I'm totally feeling the blue zone. But I'm gonna say this one doesn't have, I don't have my blue zone on here because this is my preschool model. If I use this with preschool, I typically leave off the blue zone in the beginning because the blue zone can be confusing a little bit for young kids. So that's the other piece if you're using this with 
students that have significant cognitive issues um, and they're not processing it, maybe take out the freezer. Just a suggestion. Maybe not. Uh, maybe you can add it back later. So blue zone is a rest area. Um, I am sick, sad, or tired. Um, I need to rest and re-energize. What can I do in the blue zone? So the green zone. The green zone is where we hope kids are at. Green for go, right? It's my calm state of alertness. Um, hopefully, I feel happy, I'm content, I have a calm body, and I'm ready to learn. If I'm teaching this, hopefully I'm teaching this in a place of a green zone. Green zone is my optimal learning zone. I still may teach this in the blue zone or the yellow zone. In the red zone, I'm not teaching anything. My red zone is heightened state of alertness, intense emotion, no control. Things are out of control. I am angry. I am, I, maybe I'm having rage. Maybe I am terrified. <laughs> maybe I'm in the red zone and it's because I am abjectly terrified of what's that, something that's happening. A spider fell on me, or a snake crawled out from under my desk today. I don't know. Um, that's my red zone. Other things to know about red zones. If you have a student who lives in red zones, when I first started using this, I had a lot of students who lived their whole life in a red zone. Pretty much most of the time. Sometimes they came back up to a yellow zone, but most of the time they were in a red zone. Um, if you have a student who's in a red zone, safety is first priority. I'm going to limit my speech. I don't want to talk to them that much because I've probably already talked it to them. And when you're in a red zone, you're in fight, flight, or freeze mode. Your body, your higher functioning part of your brain has shut down. So let me tell you my fight, flight, or freeze story. Um, a few months ago, I was outside of my house. We have a feral cat that we feed on our propane tank out in the yard. We feed her up there, it's out of the dog's range. I feed this cat. So I go out, I have to wait until it's almost dusk. It doesn't show up until dusk. Um, so that's my routine. I go outside, I have my phone in my hand, I got my cat food in my other hand, and I'm headed up the hill. We live in the National Forest. Let me preface this to say that. We live in Danube National Forest. We border Cape Breton Lake um, is where I live. So lots of animals, lots of things live in our woods, and they sometimes come to our house. Um, bears, coyotes, I mean, we've seen all of them. Not a, coyotes on our porch, bears in our yard. Um, sometimes, right? So, got my cat food, got my flashlight, I'm going up the hill. It's dark, it's um, springtime, it's warm, but not super warm yet. I'm walking up the hill, I get to the gas tank and I'm setting down the food. Something makes this weird noise and comes out from my side vision and jumps towards me. I can't tell what it is. I can tell that it looks like it weighs about 30 or 40 pounds, and it's growling, um, a weird growl. And so my fight or flight or freeze mode, I don't know what happened to my phone, which is my flashlight. I don't even remember dropping it. I am barefoot. <laughs> I am screaming. I am running back to the house. I'm crying hysterically. Um, and my husband goes, what happened? What happened? And I'm like, <gasps> like, I don't have any, I can't process, I can't say anything. He's like, where's your phone? And I'm like, I don't even remember taking my phone outside. It totally freaked me out. I don't know. So I'm totally freaked out. Fight, flight, or freeze mode. I'm a fairly functional human. But once you reach a certain point, a certain point your brain just says, nah, -uh. <laughs> you're going to run, I ran, right? You're going to run, you're going to freeze up or I'm gonna fight you to the dead. Whatever may happen. It turned out to be a, another much larger, it wasn't a feral cat, but it was our neighbor's cat. It was this freaking huge uh, tabby cat that decided to sit in the tree and ambush me. <laughs> and it just about caused me to stroke out. Um, anyways, thankfully, you no know, people were harmed in the process of this fight, flight, or freeze. I found my phone. It's laying out the a bobcat. I thought it was a bobcat. <laughs> yeah, I totally thought it was a bobcat. We've had a few, and we've had a few times of animals with rabies showing up. Every now and then we get animals that are foaming at the mouth and rabies, not very often, but it has happened. We've lived there about 20 years. It's happened enough that you watch when you go outside. Um, anyways, totally scared me to death. Um, I was totally in the red zone. I had no idea, no more bosses. Um, the other thing is, Give them time and space. Process later. There's a pro inside of that book is an option called stop 
off and go solution finder. So there's a visual support on how do we find a solution inside of that book. Um, and designate a safe spot. In my classroom, we did so we had a bean bag. If you were ticked off, if you were to read someone, you had to go sit in the bean bag. In another classroom that I was in, we had an indoor porch swing in our classroom. And if you were ticked off, you sat on the porch swing. Because if you're on that porch swing, you can get movement and motion, but you have a designated spot to be angry at. And I can walk away from you. And hopefully you're not following me. I need you to stay there while I go away so that I can give you that space. And it took some time to teach that. The yellow zone is our caution, right? Things aren't bad yet, right? Things aren't bad yet, but we're on our way. <laughs> this is my trigger warning. Um, I might be starting to get angry, but I still have some control, right? I could feel really stressed out. I might be having a lot of anxiety. Maybe I'm nervous. Uh, maybe I'm being really super silly. I've seen kids that as they hit that yellow zone, they get kind of a little bit extra giggly, a little bit extra whatever. Um, that's the yellow zone. And this becomes your common vocabulary, right? So when I use this with my students, in the beginning especially, they can't tell what zone they're in. So I'm gonna say, hey, you look like you're in the yellow zone. What can we do here? And this strategy book said it gives you options. For when you're in the yellow zone, what can I do that's socially appropriate to help regulate myself? Um, so that's kind of the way that this works. So starter tips, your adults have to model. You need to set up times during the day for students to check in. All zones are always okay. You have to have staff buy in. You need your other staff members, everyone, to use this vocabulary. Hey, you're in the green zone. Great job, guys. We're feeling really great today. Oh, you're in the yellow zone. What can we do here? I can tell you look really stressed out. How, you're in the yellow zone. What can we do to help you feel better? It needs to go with the student, probably. If this is a student who has intense emotional needs um, or intense behavioral needs, this needs to be something that can travel with them. Um, just know that. Um, I'm trying to think of other tips. Probably those are my big ones. Other takeaways, oh, the other thing that I was gonna say was, this can be used if you're having to do NTI days. Um, some of my teachers, they do a zones check-in in the morning, takes about five or 10 minutes. They do a zones check-in at the end of the day, <laughs> takes about five or 10 minutes. So it could be used on an NTI day on Zoom or on Google Meet or how we do it. And there is one of the last slides, just in case we run out of time, one of the last slides has a, a couple of um, YouTube videos of people using zones at home and people using zones during COVID for school-based NTI learning. So just know that there are resources for using this at home through NTI or whatever COVID-based learning. Um, all zones, everybody's going to go through all the zones at one point or another. We've all been every zone, maybe every zone in the same moment or every zone in the same day. Um, it's a teaching tool, right? It is meant to be a teaching tool. And you might need to individualize the tools for each child. So other things that you can do with it is these are just a lot of pictures of ways that people have used it. So this is just up on a bulletin board. Um, what zone are you in? Um, I have seen this be, this is the big piece of it for me. And what zone am I in? It's great if I can identify what zone. But if I'm in the yellow zone or I'm in the green, I'm, how do I get back to the green zone, right? Um, I'm in the yellow zone. I need to take extra action. So I need to try these tools. Let's get a drink. Let's use my inner coach. So my inner coach is, hey, I can get through this. I'm going to be OK. So positive self-talk. Um, you know what? I can do hard things. Um, take a break. Other options. So these are out here. That's one of the resources that they have on their website. This comes from a program called Social Thinking, socialthinking.com. So other zones of regulation, the cool thing is this has been around forever. So if you want to do make this cute or fun for your student, maybe you have a student who loves minions. I'm going to confess I totally have one of these that is minion based at my house <laughs> for my own self. <laughs> Just for fun because I'm a nerd and I like it. Um, so zones of regulation, so you can pair it up and make it look like whatever. I have seen this be used with um, is it inside out? Oh, yeah. yeah, I have seen it be, it goes really well with that. Um, I have seen it be used with that. There's a ton of resources out there online that you can find to kind of pair with these types of things. Um, other things, this is from their website. This is one of their kind of older board maker type pictures if you want something more generic. 
I will say, whichever one you pick, use it across the board with that student. Right? It shouldn't look one way in one classroom and another way in another classroom. That's going to be too much or too confusing. So whatever you pick, stick with it and make it be for everyone. So this is a quick check-in. Um, I'm in the green zone, I'm in the blue zone, I'm in the yellow zone. So all of their names are on it. So they just pull whichever color represents them. They drop it into a bucket. It tells the teacher real quick, oh gosh, uh, Cherie is in the red zone. So I maybe need to send her to get a drink or let her choose the strategy to help bring herself back down. And Nick is in the yellow zone. So what can I do to support Nick? So they're going to pull their name out and say, which is on their name. Um, this is in a regular classroom. Um, this is on the bulletin board. Um, and it's kind of a functional bulletin board that they are using um, as a part of their check-in, check-out. Other, lots of examples. These emojis I have seen be used at high school level. The emojis are uh, age neutral, kind of, right? Some of the cartoonish stuff is harder as you get a little older, but emojis go forever. Lots of pictures, lots of options. The best thing is, is this is a bulletin board, and these are, these are all the teachers. Um, so these are baby pictures of all the teachers. So those were baby pictures of them crying. Oh yeah. Right. They used and the kids. It was a middle school I think, and the kids loved it. Um, so they used it school wide, and it was out in the hallway for everyone to see. So lots of cool options, um, especially if you don't have like a positive behavior, a PDIS type of system in your school. Um, this can pair with that. So how do I feel today? I'm in the blue zone. I'm in the green zone. So it's just a good way. The names are on the I'm a little close pinned. If I feel close pinned anymore. <laughs> All right. Book nook. Book nook. <laughs> Let me show you this one. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll come back. Book nook. This is the. This is a link to it. Um, the book nook is I talked to you about it a little bit. So it's a little critter. Um, it goes across the board, up and down. The nice thing about it is when you go to the book nook, there's an elementary age, and then there's a tween and tween and high school age. Each book, it is color coded. So it'll have the red, the green, the blue, the yellow, whichever color code that matches up. So you can read the book and then practice with your student. Gosh, what zone do you think he's in? Or what zone do you think this character is in? Yeah, the yellow zone. What could they do? What's a strategy that they might try? Um, so it has some stuff like that in it. I do really like the book note. Other tools that are included in the zones. So things you're going to find in the book. So inside of the book, you're going to find six sides of reading. So everybody read with me, and I'm going to have to talk through it. Okay, so we start on the star. So on the star, you breathe in. You hold it to the count of four. You breathe out. You breathe back in, and you hold to the count of four. You breathe out, and then you just continue as many times, right? So it's just a visual graphic on taking a deep breath, right? Essentially, it's a way to take a deep breath. Um, other resources that you're going to find, this is lazy eight breathing. You're going to use your finger, and you're going to trace. Inside of the book, it gives you details. Each one of the lessons. Anybody know where it's my zones of regulation book here? I'll steal it. Okay. So inside of there, you're gonna find under the lessons, you're gonna find actual, it actually has the lesson plans. So if you have to turn in lesson plans, these are photocopyable, and your book should come with a little thumb drive or a little jump drive in the back that makes these digital, you can access them digitally. Um, that makes it really nice. So lesson 17, stop, off, and go. It has your whole, here's my overview, here's what I need, here's my lead in. It's kind of scripted. It's kind of scripted. So I don't have to guess. It has very nice visuals that I could just cut out of the book. Um, or, and it's meant to be, there's a perforated page. Or I could use the thumb drive to get those from if I have access to a color printer. Um, it also tells you, hey, here's a way to generalize that. Um, so I used to, I see a lot of people say they're using zones of regulation, but they never do any of the lessons in the book. That's the downfall, right? You have to do the lessons. If that kid is above kindergarten, 
they should be doing the lessons. And early elementary could probably even do all of these. The solutions will look different, right? You're gonna modify it a little bit, but it's absolutely, it's research for ages four through high school, and it is research-based. Um, it is completely research-based, so that is really nice. Other tools that you're gonna find is zone idioms. Um, we know students with autism have a really hard time with non-literal language. So what does it mean if I'm in the blue zone? Oh, down in the dumps. <laughs> we say that all the time. Are you down the dump? Why the long face? So it's giving them the vocabulary, helping them to figure out the vocabulary that they need. So if I'm in the green zone, I feel 10 feet tall. I'm as cool as a cucumber. <laughs> I have a student asking me, how do you know what a cow cool cucumber is? And I'm like, as I felt it. No. <laughs> um, maybe it's other other tools. So if I'm in the yellow zone, um, I've got a chip on my shoulder, maybe. Well, maybe you have butterflies in your stomach. You're at your wit's end. You've got ants in your pants and you're wiggly. So it gives you the vocabulary of things that they might hear other people say that will help them clue in what zone they're in. If you're in the red zone, maybe you went bananas, right? Uh, go to pieces. Uh, maybe you're jumping for joy. Maybe you need to blow off some steam, ready to boil. Maybe you lost your cool. What are, what are the words that you say when your student is in the red zone? Think about that for a minute. What's your cue for students that are about to lose it? What does that zone look like? Um, it's a good strategy. Because I do think for behavior, you want to talk to your friends for a minute. What, what do you say when kids are about to lose it? Talk to your friends for about two minutes. Katie. <laughs> Sometimes it needs some work, right? 
So the nice thing about the zones is it's going to say, when I feel angry, when I feel angry, I can talk to the teacher. I can take a break. I can say, I need a hug. Um, I can take a deep breath. And then there are more options. The nice thing about this visual support is maybe none of those things are right for your student. Put the right things on there. You can adjust it and modify it. Maybe they already have a couple of good strategies. We taught things like Tucker Turtle takes time to tuck and think. It's a breathing strategy. And it goes to a whole little social story of when I get mad, here's what I can do. Um, because it is a lifelong skill to learn that. And it changes a little bit, right? As we age and get older, um, things that we did in elementary when we were mad become maybe isn't quite age appropriate anymore when we hit high school age. That's the nice thing about this is that I can adjust to whatever is right for my setting and my students. And I can think that piece through. This is the stop, off, and think. So I need this my own self sometimes. Uh, I have thought about putting this, I have put this up in my Sunday school classroom when I taught teenagers. <laughs> when I taught teenagers and we were talking about uh, different you know, life options and life goals, and I'm like, this is, this is the goal, this is the visual support that they all need. Um, so stop before you act. Off. Think about what are your options and how will that work things out, and then choose to go with the best ones, right? So here I'm going to write what my problem is. Here, I write my best option. So it becomes kind of a visual support of, gosh, you know, somebody's in my seat at lunch, so I'm gonna stop, and I'm gonna think about my options. So my option is, I could push him out of my seat. That's an option. Or I could just sit in a new seat. Well, which one is my better option? Well, if I push him in the floor, <laughs> then I'm gonna get detention. Or I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna lose my lunch time. But if I choose a new seat, Maybe I can get my seat back tomorrow. It kind of gives you kind of a graphic organizer of how do I get how do I get to the best option um, for me and my student. So virtual learning and zones of regulation. There is quite a bit of stuff on this. Five ways to incorporate the zones into distance learning so they can create their own visual at home. Um, there is a about a, there's another I, I put the link on here. Zones of Regulation did about a one hour um, free webinar and they put it up on YouTube. So I put the link to it. You don't have to watch all of it, but they show different ways that you can make zones at home. Also, if you are planning NTI days or you know your school is going to have NTI days, you can simply send, send your version home, not the one you're using in your classroom, but maybe you send one home with them. Um, maybe it's in their NTI if you have a binder or if you're doing this. Google Meets or YouTube, however your school does that, um, it could be, it could just be a virtual picture. So there is teach a tool of the week, right? And create home toolboxes. So the other thing is this one up top is, this is a one hour long, it's questions and answers. Um, it's a whole hour of <laughs> questions and answers. If you've got a question, they probably somebody's asked it. Um, it's actually pretty good. And then this bottom one is a PDF from them, and it's free. Um, you just print it out, uh, and you can create your own zones. The other nice thing is, is that when you go to this zonesofregulation.com, a lot of those first few different graphics of the zones are free. And they put them out there for anyone to use. Uh, because they want you all, they do want you all to use them. The downfall of that is, I personally think you need the book. Even if, you know, just because if you don't, if you don't have the book, you don't have the lessons that go along with it. So when we just use the graphic, like graphic organizer part, but we're not teaching the lessons, you miss out on some of the lessons. So we know that. Um, other resources? Oh, this one is good. This is Miss Zones at Weebly.com, all the way out there. That one is, um, she has captured little video clips of cartoons, little tiny clips of movies, um, book examples, and she says, hey, this 30 second video clip shows the red zone. So it gives you a way to talk about the zones, right? Because we identify them much more in the beginning. We're gonna identify them with other people. So she's giving you a lot of options for this week or this month. Maybe it's a month in your class, and that's okay. This month, we're talking about the yellow zone. <laughs> um, so here are here, here are all kinds of resources that I can use to help me teach 
what the yellow zone really is. Maybe I'm doing the yellow zone for a whole week. I don't know. It depends on you and your kids. And this one here is a link to all of their free handouts. They do have quite a bit of different ones. They also have ones that are more updated to represent different cultures um, and different age groups. So there's some better options for that. We do have kids, diverse populations. So there are some really good options. Um, and this email is dead, so don't, don't even want to email me if that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. It's, it's gone. I missed it last month. It was too much to have three work emails. Um, three work emails is too much. But my email is on this, on the back of this web. And I am Zones of Regulation, this resource folder right here. They asked me to remind you on the back of this is this QR code is their evaluation. I don't know what time it is. That's all right. We're officially done. And I will say next month I do um, I, for KVEC, I do once a month, we call it the, they call it the autism hour. Um, next month's topic in March is going to be sensory and sensory. Is March topic. I've had a few people, so that's what we're gonna do for March. So it's March, it's a Tuesday and it's after school 3.30 to 4.30 is the time. Hold on one second. It is March 21st. Can you report Yes, Kate does. Yeah, they do, and then they upload them. I don't know. And they're on KVX. They're, they're in the holler. Doug or probably probably Stephanie or it's one of them. I'm not 100% sure how to access that, but they do know. We've done one every month, pretty much every month this year.